All right, I'm calling the meeting to order Monday, October 6, 2014, uh, Rules Committee. Uh, first item on the agenda is citizen comment, and no one has signed up to speak. So if anyone, oh, Alderman Rainey. Madam Chair, I'd like to speak. I just want to remind everybody that tomorrow is the last day to register for, to vote. And you can do it online if you have a driver's license. In Illinois. Thank you very much. Uh, is Alderman Ray? No, I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> okay, you turn it off. I won't touch it. <laughs> um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are approved. <coughs> Uh, city manager, next is a report on the fiscal year 2015 city council goals. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the committee, good evening. Uh, before we get started, just to let you know, we're having some uh, technical difficulties with the uh, camera system and the recording system here. So we are uh, taping the meeting right now and we'll play it back at a future time. It will also be available on YouTube, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll have the uh, everything fixed for next week's city council meeting. Um, the Rules Committee had requested uh, at its last meeting an opportunity to discuss uh, the city, uh, the current City Council rules, and this, or excuse me, the city, current City Council goals for 2014. And as a reminder, those are city facilities, city streets, economic development, financial policies, and city debt, services for at-risk families, and water and sewer issues. So we have staff here this evening to give a brief update on where we stand uh, with each of these. We're certainly happy to answer any questions. As you know, uh, we're getting ready to release the fiscal year 2015 proposed budget. Uh, that document will be released on Friday. Uh, discussions with the council begin on October the 20th. So we're uh, getting ready to uh, spend on a lot of time talking about many of these issues, but uh, welcome the opportunity this evening to talk specifically about the council goals. Uh, Suzette Robinson, our Director of Public Works, is here, uh, I believe, in the uh, Alderac Library. Uh, Ms. Knight, could you maybe check and see that here she comes. So we'll start uh, with Ms. Robinson uh, talking about city facilities and city streets. Ms. Robinson, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Tisdall, City Council, and City Manager. Um, I just want to give a, a brief update on um, where we are in terms of streets and facilities for 2015. Um, that's just a refresher of the slide for 2014, the, the square yards of, that we plan to, to <coughs> accomplish for this year. Um, if you recall, part of when we got the evaluation done for the street resurfacing, uh, which we completed at the end of uh, 2013, there was some evaluations that were done on the pavements and we uh, put together a slide indicating uh, where we stood in terms of uh, the less than 40, which are very poor, um, and then 40 to 59, which is in the, the, the poor category. Um, you asked us to prepare a um, three-year CIP that dealt with the, the very poor and the poor streets. Um, and I'm pleased to report after we finish the streets that we have proposed for 2015, we will have addressed all of those with a score of 40 or less, which fall in the uh, very poor category. And then our recommendations for uh, 2016 and beyond uh, focuses on the streets that are rated um, between 40 and 50. Alderman Rainey has a question. Okay. Of your PowerPoint, or will it be online? Uh, it should be. All the great members of the council, as you know, we've gone to a new format where the presentations are to be online for the council. Um, I don't know that we have incorporated that yet for uh, the committee, so we'll make sure that it's online. Okay. Just so I don't Apologies. And it is safe to the S drive. I don't know if they have access to that. No, we'll, we'll post it online. Um, so our our plan for uh, 2015 
Um, these are the locations. Uh, what I did was the locations and the, the dollar amounts for the, the CIP streets and the, uh, wa that include uh, water main replacement. So we uh, just have six streets. Uh, Dempster, which will be uh, resurfaced by the by IDOT, and uh, the water main will be replaced on that. So you see the water main, the six hundred fifteen thousand dollars for the water main um, replacement. A cost only because the state is paying for the resurfacing on cost. Uh, we have uh, Dodge, Hastings, Lake, Maine, and Pittner, um, all of which are water main with the exception of Lake Street. Um, I want to note that also, in addition uh, to the, the, we have $150,000 in CIP to cover for contract street patching, uh, which is um, what we did this after this winter to address uh, some of the, the major uh, problems that we have for streets that are not uh, quite in the, the, the next year, next three years for, for resurfacing, but need uh, major patching beyond pothole repairs. So we spent roughly $200,000 this year addressing um, a lot of those streets. Um, and we will present a map much in the way that we did last year after uh, the mild winter that we're going to have <laughs> um, and, and see um, how far we can stretch those dollars. So for MFT streets, um, those are the locations that we have listed uh, for those. Um, when we were contemplating the uh, resurfacing for Sheridan Road, um, we redistributed the $950,000 of MFT that was going to be earmarked uh, for that um, and applied it to uh, Ridge Avenue and then we also expanded to cover uh, some of the streets that were at the lower end of the, the, the 40s um, in terms of pavement ratings. So Ridge Avenue, um, and there's actually two sections of Ridge Avenue between Emerson and uh, Isabella. Uh, the part um, there's a, a center part that was done, so as you drive down Ridge, there's actually a part in the middle that's in, in much better shape. Uh, but from Central to Isabella, it, it needs to be resurfaced, and, and from Emerson um, to about Lincoln um, is in the same condition. <coughs> Howard Street, that's from the... Excuse me, Director Robinson, all the rain. So Ridge, north of Emerson, wasn't part of the reconstruction of Ridge? No, it was not. No, we stopped. We stopped just before the intersection. It, it, just after church. Just after church. That's correct. So the the Ridge Emerson Green Bay construction that entire intersection um, is for scheduled for 2016, but we'll pick up just um, at Foster, just south of Foster, and then continue on to um, Lincoln. Is Chicago Avenue up there? I can't see that. No. No. It, what is the plan for Chicago Avenue from, let's say, Main Street to Howard Street? Chicago Avenue for is in 2016 from uh, South Boulevard to um, Howard, and then it's in 2017 uh, most of the rest of the way because we have the water main. The water main has already been replaced on that uh, the very south end, but it was done with a patch. Um, Part of the funding that we're seeking for the rest of Chicago Avenue also includes the, some TIF funding, so we need to wait until that funding is available. Um, I, I was really hoping the president would drive down there from Howard so that he would immediately send a check to federal projects. Well, I didn't know that that was possible, so I was hoping for the opposite, just so you know. That he, <laughs> but he would not do that. <laughs> but I, I was hoping. <clears throat> So also included in the, the, the budget, um, we have an additional $300,000 of MFT um, to um, address um, resurfacing <coughs> issues. So the, and the Howard Street project is really from the city limits, so part of that includes the TIF. It's the very um, west end of Howard Street from city limits to Hart Street is what that I'm sorry, we're going all the way to Dodge, but part of that is covered under TIF. Um, 
and um, I have a list of just the facility projects that, that we plan to uh, complete for 2015. Uh, the animal shelter is a uh, roof and some uh, building renovations. Um, the, the ecology center is the classroom expansion. Uh, Crown Center is for uh, design. Um, the civic center is a, a security enhancement uh, project. Um, Levy Center is a restroom uh, improvement. Uh, Fleetwood Jordan and Chandler Newberg, Newberger are projects that will come out of the facility studies uh, that we're in the process of completing. Um, the Church Street Boat Ramp project we talked about already, that's uh, with a grant um, and we'll be uh, coming forward to council. Um, we're just finishing up that RFP. Um, Maple Church and, and Sherman Garage um, also have improvements and then we have for the service center um, some building storage that is going to be lost as a result of the salt dump. And last but not least, we have the 2015 Lorraine H. Morton Civic Center uh, parking lot, uh, which the Intergovernmental agreement, we just uh, signed with MWRD, so just a reminder that $750,000 in funding from MWRD and $500,000 uh, from the parking fund. So there will be an, an expansion of the parking lot and it will be a sustainable parking lot uh, along with uh, lots of educational um, and information boards that will talk about the various sustainable um, infrastructure treatments to include rain gardens, bioswales, um, native uh, species listing, um, as well as the permeable pavement. We have a combination of permeable asphalt and permeable concrete that will be uh, present in the area. So that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Alderman Tender. Thank you. When, could you send this to us? And uh, as the PDF of the presentation. And also, I'm curious when you listed streets like Hart Tree or Bennett, what blocks those would actually be um, would be helpful, just if you had a map or something that showed all Yes, I, I absolutely do have that information. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Could you also give us the price tags with the Ecology Center and all the others on the list? I will do that as well. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Madam Mayor, members of the Council, you'll have a capital budget on Friday. So all of what we, this was meant to be a preview. Uh, I think the council direction has been clear as far as facilities and build and streets. And I think that what we've been able to put forward is a is a good plan. We've done a lot in 14 and we're doing a lot again in 15. Well, I can wait till Friday and then Alderman Humps. I wasn't quick enough to see the whole map of the Civic Center's parking lot, but in that improvement on the south side, um, that won't have any interference with the Avenue of the Righteous, will it? That won't interfere with the Avenue of the Righteous? No, it will oh, not. Okay. No, absolutely not. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Rainey. I'm wondering if we are thinking ahead and making any plans to relocate all the storage items that we have at the recycling center. Yes, the, as it relates to the um, the, the carts we actually have, we're repurposing the additional carts and using them as a part of the multifamily recycling program. So we've been actually labeling those and, and placing those into buildings because it doesn't matter if they're blue or not as long as they're identified as recycling carts. So you'll see uh, more of those um, move out. We have not found, a, um, I guess, a, a permanent storage space um, for, some, for some of the other items that, that we need to store. Well, but, but, but you're not happy. How many cans do you think there are on the surface lot outside and inside the building? Oh, there are quite a few. Oh, yeah, there are quite, quite a few. Well, we're not going to distribute thousands to multifamily buildings. Well, this is for within the buildings, the, the, um, the pilot program is designed to place the uh, containers actually on the floor to make it more convenient for recycling. So we've been working with property managers that um, allow find space inside the building. So this is the inside. But I'm uh, saying that I, I, I don't believe we're going to eliminate that many cans from the recycling center by doing that. It's a great idea, and I, I hope people will accept the cans. 
but we just need to find a place for that. For those. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we've covered city facilities and city streets and extra on tonight and our manager of economic development is here to give an update on, on the economic development goal. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of city council. Uh, this is a year review. We've talked a little bit about some of these things, but I just wanted to go over where we're at with some important numbers. Uh, we're on pace to exceed last year's uh, new businesses. As of the, about the third quarter, we had 40 but new businesses, and um, we're not even um, into the fourth quarter, or we're barely in the fourth quarter. Um, our announced jobs have been pretty high due to a number of restaurants that have opened up, and uh, those have always been a lot of new jobs. Um, so we've had over 300 so far today, and last year we were under 300 announced jobs. Uh, the staff in economic development has visited over 150 businesses to date. A large number of those were this summer. We had a cadre of wonderful interns that helped schedule and get us out uh, and visit with a lot of businesses. So we're going to continue that work into the fall, ramping up to the holiday season. Uh, we've also, thanks to Northwestern, had quite a bit of commercial construction activity. Um, so that number's been um, very positive. And finally, uh, office, and office and retail vacancy rates have been uh, relatively good um, compared to, to other places. We, we've been lower than the Chicago and the North Shore region. And um, the, the story behind a couple of these numbers is the office vacancy rate, usually you like to see between a 5 and 7% rate. A uh, good chunk of this is the 1007 Church, the Helmet Yon building um, that's on Church and Oak has, been, has had some, some large vacancies. That contributes to a, a little bit higher of a number here as well as the, the retail vacancy about, we estimate about a third of that percentage of the vacancy is due to Evanston Plaza, which we anticipate um, good news coming forward as it has a new owner. And finally, the unemployment rate for August, the last reported number was probably the lowest, it actually is the lowest that Evanston has experienced in unemployment since end of 2006. Um, so, oh, yes, 2006. In 2006, they were um, in the threes, three point to 3.3, and uh, while we don't focus on the specific employment of Evanston residents in our, in our work, we certainly encourage the businesses that come to Evanston to hire Evanston residents, so we, we hope that that um, has helped, and, and certainly Evanston residents, we like them to shop in our business <coughs> districts. Uh, several major projects have, have started or have been co completed in 2014. Um, so far included the main Chicago, 835 Chicago Avenue entitlement process as well as the approval of uh, funding for the office component of that project. Uh, as we all know, Evanston Plaza has switched owners and um, we now have a new ownership and hopefully uh, a plan moving forward as we work with them to re-tenant the shopping center and upgrade it to be a little bit more modern. Uh, and the re that includes the realization of the Dominic stores um, we're, we're now no longer on the list of places that don't have um, the options for our dominics, so that's a, a really exciting thing to move forward in 2015. And Oakton Asbury, a vacancy that's been present for almost 10 years now, uh, is finally moving forward with the addition of Little Beads, which will be a nice uh, family-oriented destination for, and a neighborhood destination for a coffee shop. And then the auto farm retention, 40 and jobs that they're working to bring to 222 Hartree the reoccupancy of a, of a major vacant property, as well as uh, the addition of the Fiat Alfa Romeo dealership on Chicago Avenue. And finally, Few Spirits. We, we've continued to help Few Spirits grow here in Evanston and uh, expand their bottling line and uh, distribution to, I think he's trying to hit all all seven continents. So um, get any, I, I'm not sure how, what his plan for Antarctica is yet, but I think he, I'm sure he's going to make one. Um, so I think another important highlight of what the work we do is Excuse me, um, Alderman Rainey has a question. So Johanna, these, the, pro the list that you had before, those are just projects that we worked on, right? That we actually Correct. played the city, a role The in. city yeah. had a role. there were other projects. Absolutely. I'm thinking of the Carroll Pikefield building that's just about finished that had several you know, topping off ceremony, et cetera. Right, sure. these are projects that staff had that and know. the council had a direct role in. Great. Uh, business districts, uh, the merchant district grants that we work to provide every year are an incredibly important aspect of what um, 
of what happens in those districts and our relationship with the small businesses in Evanston. Uh, we gave out nine this year, um, and each range between eight and sometimes ten thousand dollars. So. Um, that's almost $100,000 of merchant grant district assistance that we provide that they're really driving and determining how that money gets spent. Um, and finally, an offshoot of that has been the main Chicago Dempster merchants coming together and, and initiating the process to establish a special service area, which is a, a special tax that they will be agreeing to tax themselves in order to provide extra services and enhanced activities um, going forward. And it, on top of all of this, these groups have come together and we meet with them regularly. And one of the things we're working on right now is the looking ahead to the holidays. Uh, and November 29th will be Small Business Saturday. So we're gonna, each of the business districts will be working to promote and have activities in the business districts those days. Uh, and we're also gonna try to encourage, we've learned that none of the businesses stay closed on the Friday after Thanksgiving. So try to keep them uh, open even, even if they're not at a shopping mall. Uh, excuse me, Alderman Randy has a question. Johanna, do you know of any other community in, of our size that is doing this? Or is this just the merchant grants? You know, when we've looked at upgrading and changing the program over the years, we've tried to find other communities that have it. Some, some do, uh, and it's, but not on our size. Um, I think Seattle might have a program where they give small block groups or uh, neighborhood groups money to, to self-organize to do things. But this is is pretty unique to the Evanston. And one of the things that people should know, one of the things that people should know, is that these grants bring the merchants together, makes them talk to one another, get to know one another, and call one another. Whereas I know in in my area, they never knew one another, or even went in each other's stores, which is just amazing. Um, and the same with the Chicago uh, main dumpster organizing to create a service area. I mean, it's because you all on staff brought those people together. That never would have happened. You know, if you had just come up with the idea and tried to force them on them, they would never have accepted it. But uh, so I, do, I just think it, it just creates such a vibe. And they say, and they really, they've been driving this process yeah. more than anything else. That's, that's really, and that's how it has to, when you want to establish a special service area, you have to have, they have to be the, the drivers. They have to buy it. It's ride. all them. Yeah. And, and, and Madam Mayor, uh, maybe we could just talk about how many have been created just in the last few years. We've, uh, this year, uh, Noy Street, uh, we've done Howard Street in the last couple of years. We've done how many in West Evanston? Uh, well, there's varying degree. The, the Dr. Hill group, which is just west of here, had been in existence for a while, but we've helped add some vigor to what they're doing. Uh, Central Evanston Business Association, which is a handful of the smaller business districts around the west side, um, Emerson and Church and Dodge, Emerson and Dodge, um, so some, and then there's the west, I haven't even gotten to that part, obviously. Um, then there's the West Main Street Merchants Group, the area around uh, Dodge and Main, and then also West Village, which is the area around Dempster Dodge, and finally West End, which is predominantly the industrial businesses. Um, and then Noise Foster we've worked with, and the Howard Street Business Association as well. So that's, um, I think, almost eight at, at the end of the day. And then there's varying engagements that we've brought out with other groups in, along Central Street that when you have just a small group of Central Street participating in things, we've tried to work to expand the entire Central Street. And finally, um, entrepreneurship. Uh, Paul Zomazak on our team. Uh, spends quite a bit of time doing this and thinking about how we help the, the companies that are here because of the high quality of place, because they want to be here because this is the place. It's not the loop, it's not the suburbs, it's, it's Evanston. And so uh, to that end, we, we've done a few events, Evanston Startup Showcase, if you haven't been to one, um, I highly encourage you to attend one. It's, it's an event where we'll often have somebody pitch a new business or come up with and then they get to interact with other entrepreneurs that uh, it almost, it's like Evanston's version of Shark Tank, um, except nobody gets funded at the end of the, end of the show. Um, so that's, that's a great event. Next chapter, um, we've hosted over 30 seminars at the library and had uh, well over 200 participants come and learn everything from how to balance your books to how to have a better presence on social media. And it's, it's, we've had the business community participate and uh, offer up the seminars, and these are people the participants, you have to have an Evanston library card. So these are either Evanston residents or people who work in Evanston and have a library card. 
And finally, now we're cooking, which I think many of you are familiar with already. Uh, we've continued, this, we're in our final year of funding and supporting them, uh, and they've, we've, we've worked with them to create 30 active incubator program members, and uh, also they're part of the Shared Kitchen project. So that was all I had. My first thing's all. I'll hold them in 10. Um, do you have a list of uh, vacancies for business and offices in uh, by ward? I'd be curious to know, I, I, I'm a, I know when a storefront closes or something like that, but there are a lot of offices on second stories and, and things like that that it'd be interesting to know if they were vacant or looking for a tenant. Um, we get our data from CoStar, so they don't break down beyond municipal boundaries, but I believe that there's a function there that we can hand draw, yeah. uh, but, and I, but I'd have to check, and, but I could certainly see if we could get that and provide it. Thanks. And your goals for 2015 is retaining Pivot Point, one of them? Absolutely. Okay. Always. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, next matter, Mayor Marty Lyons is here to talk about, uh, or, or we can go to uh, uh, services for at-risk families. Is that the, that slide? Yeah. Let's just do that. Uh, one of Thomas Smith, our health director, is here. Uh, also, uh, for the council, the presentations are now on the committee's website, so cityofhenderson.org forward slash rules. Good evening, Madam Mayor, council members. Um, I just wanted to just reiterate again uh, what we shared on September 15th about um, our intention to address at-risk populations from a comprehensive standpoint. We've done it in a kind of a fragmented way, but all of the organizations internally came together to have some deep discussion about how we can really be impactful for at-risk families. And so that was the city manager's office, police, fire, health, community, um, community development, and the library. And we had four different segments of how we were to address it. We looked at um, birth to um, 16, we looked at the 16 to 24, 24 to 55, 54, and then 55 and up. And what we learned was across all uh, demographics, across the uh, life continuum, there was a lack of connecting the dots for families. Um, there was a lack of intentional case management. And so our hope is to have deeper relationships with our external partners and to be intentional about providing support and case management services. We know that providing any form of case management, you have to have a central point of intake. And so um, during our budget discussions, our hope is that we can present something meaningful to this council as it relates to central intake, having a central intake software and method, a central endpoint or a central um, entry point into services and make sure that we're intentional about including our internal partners across our organization as well as our external partners and then we can report back to see if that process has been impactful. So that's just a snapshot or overview. Um, I've been before you talking about services and um, um, uh, expansion of the general assistance program and emergency assistance, but the reality is we know that there are many families that fall outside of that um, target population, so we want to make sure that we're um, outreaching um, intentionally to the community, um, making sure that we're providing services and information to all, and helping families really, really connect the dots to uh, create some stabilization for at-risk families. And basically, that's my presentation. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we'll go to financial policy, Mr. Lyons. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the committee, Manager Rothkowitz, Marty Lyons, Assistant City Manager. Uh, just a, a couple of slides to let you know the progress on what we talked about on June 9th uh, for financial policies. And just to point out the uh, fund reserve policies that you all discussed uh, at that time, those will all be included in the budget document, so that's changing our reserves from one month to two months in um, major operating funds, and then in our capital funds, trying to address something a little bit more dynamic, and finally, for our insurance fund, creating a formula that says that we, we've made such great strides in reducing our outstanding claims payable. We went from seven million in the in claims payable down to under four million. 
So we're going to be really close to actually meeting that fund policy where we'll have so much in cash as a percentage of our outstanding claims. So right away, um, through the, uh, the great efforts of the uh, law department, we've come very close to meeting that policy. Um, the debt policy, as you uh, may recall, we have a debt Excuse limit. Excuse me, Ryan, Alderman Ryan has crossed. You can finish that sentence, but what I'm wondering is, what are we thinking here on, on Robert Kraft? I mean, that's like, I'm thinking a lot of things. Serious statement. <laughs> uh, if you would, uh, what we have discussed at the uh, um, committee level is that there would be a limit on the amount of city contribution for a, a renovated or new Robert Crown, and that we would then have uh, another piece from grants, another piece from a uh, hopefully large donation, and then finally a major fundraising program all to happen in the next 12 months so that uh, we're ready to break ground in 2015. Well, we're going to have design, and we would love to be ready to uh, bring designs, final designs, not just drawings, construction, everything, um, by the uh, middle of uh, 2015. So, and as far as debt policy goes, that will be a little bit of a, a jump in the, in the debt, but it's not what I would call our ongoing infrastructure. This is a once in, in this case, four decade type expense uh, that the city is contemplating. We are taking steps this year to minimize it, even with um, $800,000 uh, earmarked for design. We're under um, the amount of geo debt to be issued compared to last year. So um, that's a good thing. What is the projected total cost of crown? Uh, depending on which way we go. Cheapest. <laughs> uh, depending on how we go with that, uh, we're looking at somewhere around $18 million for uh, renovation on the, uh, on the and, and that's, uh, we, we saw some, I think the council will be very uh, uh, excited about some of the designs, and we'll be talking with the subcommittee in a week or so. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled with the group to uh, talk about the designs. Just some very simple but unique ideas on how to restructure and remodel. So, and we didn't get that when we did the design build operate. That's not something that came out. So we're very excited about um, some new looks at the facility without without a large increase in cost. With just some unique ideas. Does it include any, if, if it's all about um, rehabbing, does it include any expansion at all? Yes, it does. It does. Yes, we are Do looking at, have any? to give you an example, the, the current gymnasium has no room for anyone to sit inside it. So we're looking at that even as a part of renovation, that you would have room enough in that gym to turn it more into a family event that people could come and watch uh, events there and, and make it more active. But, so. it, but I, I mean, you could do that by enlarging the space, taking from something else. Are we actually going to expand the footprint? Yes. In, okay, thanks. Mm. So uh, actions taken. Uh, <clears throat> since we've had the meeting in June, we adopted uh, the new pension funding and moved that to 6.5%. As Mr. Tepfer corrected me, it's an interest rate discount rate. So I'm going to start using that. But uh, uh, so that will be a $310,000 increase for police pension funding. We also have uh, debt service level. If you recall last year, we kept the debt service levy down by refinancing $30 million in bonds and saved um, 1.5 million, a little bit more, on the general levy side, and that's what kept our bond payments down. This year, we're proposing in the 2015 budget a transfer from the general fund that is within our operating revenues to also keep the debt service levy flat again. So our goal is to present a uh, flat uh, levy for uh, all for uh, pension, debt service, and operating. The, uh, and then finally, capital improvements. Uh, we are looking at, as I noted before, less unabated geo debt than we had last year, and that includes a first uh, step with Crown. So if you took that away, we would be more than a million dollars under the bonds issued last year. And that was one of the things that we uh, outlined in our steps 
to help uh, get us more to pay as you go. Uh, we don't have a pay as you go revenue identified yet in capital, other than we're, we'll be proposing a $250,000 annual funding source from the parking fund that uh, um, basically pays for all on street metered parking. Since those, those uh, spaces are on the street, why not have the parking fund pay for that part of resurfacing? So that will help uh, reduce the amount of bonds that we issue. That's it. Thank you very much. And members members, the council, the last council goal was uh, water and sewer improvements based on back utilities directors here. Good evening, Madam Mayor, council members. Uh, I just wanted to point out that our infrastructure plan was to try to rehabilitate or replace 1% of the city's water mains and their sewer mains as well. So for water mains, that's 1.5 miles of water main or, and then 1.4 miles of sewer mains being replaced or rehabilitated. In 2014, working with the Public Works Department, uh, the 1.5 miles of water main were replaced on nine different streets. And uh, in addition, the Utilities Department oversaw the a lining of a water main on Washington Street. This is the first time that we, Evanston rehabilitated a water main union using the lining process, and we found it to be uh, successful. Uh, we didn't have any residents complain about uh, the temporary water main that had to be set up, and in my observation, it was much less disruptive, a uh, lot less digging and dust out there, and then overall, it was 35% less expensive than replacing the water main. So that's something that we want to continue in the future. In 2014, uh, we rehabilitated 2.9 miles, or approximately double the amount of sewer main that we target for. 1.4 miles was rehabilitated using our, our normal uh, ma annual maintenance funds, but we also rehabilitated another 0.4 miles in the downtown area using Washington National TIF funds. And then we were successful in getting a loan from the IEPA to rehabilitate 1.1 miles of larger downer sewer ranging in size from 36 inch to 54 inch. So uh, it was a very good year for sewer rehabilitation this year. We also worked with the Public Works Department in uh, implementing some stormwater management projects using green infrastructure. Uh, as they resurfaced the streets on Oak and on Ingleside Place, they included some coarse pavement so that uh, stormwater would infiltrate into the ground rather than going into the sewer system. And anything that we can keep out of the sewer system helps if I'm going into basements as well. In 2015, uh, we have funding allocated to replace one and a half miles of water main at six locations. And again, and that's done in conjunction with the street resurfacing, as Ms. Robinson indicated. We also hope to line 650 feet of 24 inch water main on Pittner Avenue. Uh, and that again is out of our normal funding. Uh, in addition, we're uh, looking to rehabilitate the water main on Sheridan Road. So uh, the resurfacing of Sheridan Road was pushed back to 2017. But we want to try to get the water main uh, work done next year so that we don't interfere with resurfacing and we can get the work done in a timely fashion. So uh, there's an 18 inch water main on Sheridan Road. All the water main on Sheridan Road is on over 100 years old, except for a section between Central and Ingleside that was replaced in 2009. So during the entire stretch of where they hope to pay, we, we plan to rehabilitate an 18 inch water main that's from Lincoln Street to Emerson Street, basically in front of Northwestern's uh, campus area. And then we'll replace the water main north of Lincoln Street to Central and then from Ingleside Place onto uh, Ridge. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about a little bit is the wholesale water sales. Uh, the big news on that is that tonight, four communities that comprise the Northwest Water Commission are actually voting on whether to accept this as a uh, customer of the Northwest Water Commission, and that is expected to take place. And if those communities vote for it, then uh, it, it's expected that Evanston would provide water to uh, two displays via the Northwest Water Commission starting in uh, the middle of 2015. And if that happens, we would anticipate about an extra half a million dollars in revenue. Uh, we continue. Oh, Just tell us who the four communities are so we can go online. <laughs> and Arlington Heights, Buffalo Grove, Palatine, and Wheeling. 
their meetings may be over or by now. So. I think they started at 6.30, so they may be done by now. Given this is a uh, controversial. Yeah. Uh, discussions continue with Lincolnwood. They seem to express renewed interest in that they contacted uh, Evanston last month. Niles Morton Grove and Park Ridge have partnered together and hired a consultant to deal to represent the three or uh, communities together. And, and that consultant's contacted us. And then uh, last month, uh, City Manager Bachwitz and I attended a meeting with the Northwest Water Commission as well as the. Western Municipal Joint Action Water Authority. Uh, to see Congratulations, you said it perfectly. And seeing if uh, they want to form a partnership to sell water to those seven communities. And that's the end of my report, unless there's questions. Alderman Holmes. Um, Mr. Stomach, um, on the Pitner, what 100 block is that on Pitner? I'm sorry, I don't know what 100 blocks. It's from Dempster South, uh, about two blocks. Right, and that's, I'm, I'm looking over at Alderman Breathway because I'm thinking they're redoing sidewalks and things over there now. I wonder, will that have any any impact? I mean, at least it's being measured off. I go down there quite a bit, but so that's yes. why I know that. I'm aware that the sidewalk project is taking place there. The water main is in the street, and again, it's okay. minimal excavation to do this. Oh, okay. And actually, that section of 24 inch water main goes from Dempster all the way to Main Street. If that doesn't work out and be disruptive, we can always move where we want to do that work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I, I hope that this presentation this evening demonstrates that uh, we're very focused on the city council's goals. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll be releasing the, the proposed fiscal year 2015 budget on Friday. Uh, we have a a presentation scheduled uh, on Monday, October the 20th. We have the official public hearing for the budget scheduled for Saturday, October 25th, and then your budget deliberations uh, continue uh, the first few Mondays of November with plans to be done with the budget before Thanksgiving, as we have been in previous years. I think we've done some previewing tonight of uh, some of the major components of the budget. Uh, I think we're very excited about the work we've been able to do with human services and I think have some really good plans moving forward uh, next year to better serve our residents in that area. I think the budget is extraordinarily responsible fiscally, as I think Mr. Lyons uh, alluded to, and then certainly what we're hearing with uh, city facilities, the investment in streets. We did a, a lot of outreach with the budget process this year. Um, we asked people to fill out surveys. We asked them if they had an additional $100, how would they spend it? Uh, one message came through loud and clear, and that was streets. Uh, streets really above everything else. So uh, we made sure in this budget we're spending as much as we possibly can next year on street infrastructure. So again, uh, in economic development finally, uh, I think we're looking to change our focus just a little bit next year and really focus on those businesses that are already here. Um, while it's always great to have new businesses come, we have many Evanston businesses that are looking for assistance and coordination. We talked a little bit tonight about the business uh, districts, the uh, SSA that's being planned in the South Evanston. So there's lots of good things happening and we we'll look forward to sharing uh, the budget with you on Friday. Well, congratulations City Manager and Mr. Stoneback. I know you both worked very hard on water sales and there may be a lot more good news to come. That concludes our presentation. Thank you. Is there any new business? Ah, uh, yes. Alderman Wilson. Thank you. I would like to make a reference to a and I know that, uh, or I believe that the Liquor Commission has been looking at the issue of, um, of the taxes. So I'd like to make a reference to a and to have our staff look into whether or not the 6% liquor tax is putting uh, along the lines of our uh, looking out for our local businesses, if it is putting our retailers at a competitive disadvantage or not, but uh, just to have that looked at. Uh, thank you, Alderman Ray. Well, I, as a member of AMPW, of course, we'll be glad to look at that, but I think all you have to do is read the paper, the food critics, the bar critics, to know that our bars and restaurants are full of people and it doesn't seem to be impeding uh, customers in any way. Well, I think I, what I really want to do is focus on the retailers. Perhaps I left that word out, so uh, how it's affecting the retailers. Since the Liquor Commission is doing that, I think we, I don't want staff reporting to two different groups, so we'd be happy to bow out 
because I mean, this is all being driven primarily by one local business. So there's a limit to how much staff time I think should be devoted to it. So um, I'm happy to let ANPW take over. Madam Mayor, I think you should continue your work on this. <laughs> I think you should continue my work on it, Alderman. Send us your final work. <laughs> we will discuss it in the alley later. <laughs> All right, thank you. Is there, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, I'm sorry, but before the motion, uh, we had discussed a month ago about not having this meeting this evening because the Human Services Committee was going to plan to have a joint meeting with uh, uh, the Community and Economic Development Committee as well as the Mental Health Board. That didn't happen because of scheduling all the reverse. The Chair of Human Services is out of town, but it has been scheduled for next uh, month on November the 3rd. So we would ask, Madam Chair and members of the committee, that we would not have the Rules Committee uh, on November 3rd and instead start the Human Services Joint Meeting a little bit earlier. So unless there's objection, we'll schedule it as, as that. Is that all right? Okay. Yes. Go right ahead. Thank you. Still need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it.